Hey guys, welcome back. It's update time. We have an update on the test print. Test print blue eyes white dragon cards that were going on that were being authenticated that were being graded by CDC and you know it yeah I had so many people all the people that believed that this bad boy is the real deal that and CGC and did their due diligence like they always do no wait we, we gotta ignore these don't ignore these entirely uh, the error the errors are that was just laminated and had the ink pulled off of it by the lamination that was pulled off of it that they could have easily verified. We did. We did that. They didn't do that. But I question every single bit of this stuff. I think it's ridiculous. If something doesn't have the most solid of solid backstories, history, documentation, it shouldn't it shouldn't be authenticated. You shouldn't be attaching stories to it. We had the pre-release Raichu again. I don't doubt the fact that the pre-release Raichu, that the pre-release -re pre Raichus that they graded, that it came from the factory. Great. If you want to do that, if you want to say materials authentic, by all means, do it. But when you, you start omitting stories, you start omitting things in the documentation, in your articles, your scientific journals, if you will, your CGC journals, th that's where I kind of have a problem. I think lending too much credibility to something that doesn't actually have that foundation is a dangerous game and i think this is one of those examples this is one of those things where they they're pushing it a little bit too hard with this one now everyone that was saying it was real they're like cgc cgc is coming out with it just wait, why didn't you make a video after cgc released their article why is can can someone please tell me why no one sent me the article and it was just kind of like oh no we you would think people would be like, hey, see Rattle? It's re these are real as fuck. These are so damn real. Check out CGC's article. They did science. They did scans. I love how uh, anyone and everyone that ever re references the scans for the CGC articles has no fucking clue what the hell they are. I don't blame anyone for not knowing what they are, but just because there's a fucking graph does not mean that, that the story and everything behind the item is legitimate. We saw Proto Stories, dangerous game playing Proto Stories, <laughs> the Proto Stories game, where the backstory changed from the person that was providing the story, uh, and it also turned out that Shell, the person that was providing a lot of that information, that was different depending on who he was talking to, uh, was also selling a copy of it through someone else in secret. Whoop de doo! Who would have thought that there's a whole lot of financial interest here? CGC benefits from this greatly. We've seen how fucking desperate they are in these recent times. They're working with Sean Bassick. You, you know you're desperate when you're a company that decides, hey, the only way we're going to pump our numbers is to work with Sean Bassick, the, the guy that's banned from our competition. We got to get him on board. Get him on in here. Associated with fraud, sports card fraud, a whole lot of it, Evan Mathis. Damn. We You know what? We got to ignore all of that. We need the submissions. We need our niche. The niche happens to be test prints and stuff that other grading companies won't touch. Could they do it in the correct way? Absolutely. Scans, everything else, provide all of the information, even if it doesn't lend to the credibility of the item and have it so that like there's a QR code on there. You scan it. It tells you the whole history of what's available. Everyone's statement, who made that statement, if they own copies of the cards, if they work there, all of that. If they don't want to make those statements, shouldn't be using it. But anyway, we're, that's too much. We're, we got to get back on track here. We're talking about the Blue Eyes White Dragon Test Prince Magic and Wizards Edition. Very sick. Correction from the, the previous video, and thank you to those who did. There are two different Zukes. We got Shunzuke, uh, who is the world champion uh, that got kicked for cheating. Uh, apparently also a bad dude. All the All the... Shinzukes and Shanzukes apparently are bad. Uh, I'm sure there's some good ones out there. This is like the J-Boy equivalent uh, uh, in, in Japan, apparently. They got S-Boys over there in Japan. Shinzuke is the forger. Two different people. Easy mistake. Thank you for pointing that out, everyone that did. Much appreciated. My bad. My mistake. Again, my, my Yu-Gi-Oh! lore is not exactly as... Uh, polished i guess as as the pokemon end of things but i do think this is important because it does translate over the same with we will cover some sports card stuff uh to a certain extent 
if I think it's something that's very relevant that people need to learn within Pokemon, because I do realize that the majority of my audience is probably Pokemon, there's, pro there's going to be some overlap. People that do sports, people that do Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, that also watch the Pokemon stuff. Here is an example. This is a Shinzuke counterfeit uh, with the uh, no name on it, which is eerily similar to what's going on here. This is the uh, test DM1 Blue Eyes White Dragon and uh, G3 Dark Magician Girls uh, that are directly linked to him. So that's already sketchy. You got it's it's we got something sketchy going on, something that's questionable in the authenticity department, and then we have something that was very similar that was done by somebody caught doing bad things all right so red flag to the max out the butt in the butt around the corner the listings themselves the listings themselves are sketchy af and this is the thing too it's just like people are gonna be like oh the people that didn't buy these cards are just jealous they're, they're still very available you can still buy them if you want to buy more of these i personally wouldn't touch it i know many others wouldn't touch it there's people in the the uh, Yu-Gi-Oh community who refused purchasing of these things even after they were authenticated because it's just it's sketch it's it's flipping sketch dudes we're sketching out here the listings the description has uh, two things that really stand out they won't comment on authenticity or how they got it listings removed from Yahoo Japan uh, and relisted on Rakuma uh, under a different name uh, and the seller posted on their profile that the Hourglass Wizards card they sold was counterfeit and moved the store to Rakuma for that reason. So we got somebody that has th this person has all of these super gold mine items. Uh, for some reason, our people that truly believe in this stuff are not buying them all up. You would think that they would be uh, if, if they believe in that. Maybe CGC should buy them themselves. I don't know. Is that are they allowed to do that? Uh, do they care about? Um, how they look ethics any of that no they don't they don't give a shit they'll tell people that nine fives are turning into tens early like sean bassick who can buy up all the nine fives and make a bunch of money off insider information okay yeah i thought so they don't give a shit there this stuff here uh a lot of this stuff a lot of the error cards a lot of the other stuff is like they're they're struggling it's not the pandemic anymore psa is an option now a lot of the, uh, even the collector, the amount of people collecting, the amount of newbies getting in that want to grade everything in existence, they're not there. So we get a little flailing CGC who's going to do some des desperate shit. Could they have done this correctly? Could they have found themselves a niche in the error stuff? Yes, but they're, they're, they're just, they're reaching a little bit too hard. Maybe more work needed to go into this. Maybe they do turn out to be legitimate, but we're not seeing it. There's not enough here. Don't worry, we'll look at the article. Spoiler, it's not good. We have no comparisons or official documentation whatsoever. Again, all we have is this uh, this awesome statement. Here's here's some items, guys. Would you like to waste a potentially waste a bunch of I'm I don't know. No one wants to gamble 6k on these things. That's wild. I don't know why you wouldn't. Right, their CGC says they're real. Does C is CGC going to pay out everyone that uh, that wasted money on this if it turns out that they're fake? Are they CGC? Can we? Is that that's not in the article. I don't think we'll read through it. Don't worry. So, the cards have nothing to do with Volume One. From anything that I'm told. Nothing to do with Volume 1. The artwork was meant for Starter Box, uh, released again in LB, Japanese equivalent to LOB. The artwork we got for Blue Eyes White Dragon that was featured in LOB was released in Starter Box EX. And again, guys, please correct me if I'm wrong on any of this. I'm doing my best. I'm not a Yu-Gi-Oh! fanatic. The show was pretty sick nasty. As a kid, I did have some of the cards. Not a ton. Uh, we have cards like this coming from the seller on Rakuma that would make no sense to have a MW prototype. Now, the research. The research in question here is all being done or was all being done by the individuals who own and or sold copies of the cards. So vested interest, uh, huge, important, big old should be mentioned at any point when looking at any of this stuff. You can have blinders on, whether it's intentional or not. And I'm not saying that Drew and or Omega are trying to pull a fast one on anyone here. It's very possible that they believe it's a real thing. 
I just think that there's too many holes in it to show and to, to, to authenticate it and to say like, this is real for certain. This is how it was obtained. This is how, this is where it came from. Here's the person that was working with the company that printed them. This is the person that sold them. This is who they got them from. All of this chain of custody, all of that start to finish. Here's the stories, even if there's multiple stories or they don't know the entire story, if there's some kind of, you know, we think this is this, this include the fact that they think that's what it was. They can't quite remember. Just be honest about it. This or any other test print needs a bulletproof background before any company should label it authentic. And if even then, maybe the label shouldn't say anything to do about authentic. It should just say like read details. Here it is authentic materials here's the story even if you can't fit it on the label i'm not saying you should you do the like the people that write on rice and you need like a magnifying glass to read what it says not that just have it linked somewhere where we live in the day the days of the internet where you can easily link to an article uh that shows what's what and what was what was learned about it that kind of thing but it needs to be very clear because people will automatically if it's in a case even if it's a case like the cut shit by CGC, or not by CGC, by PSA, if it's in a case, it doesn't matter if it's a different color label. It doesn't matter if the label says oopsie doopsie McPoopsie on it. If it's cryptic, if it's not obvious, if it doesn't say not authenticated, authentic material, something like that, then people are going to just assume that it is. It's the same thing with the the stuff, the, the cut up test prints that CGC is grading that don't say non-factory cut. Again, they didn't want to grade non-factory cut stuff, but they made an exception. They make a lot of exceptions. Usually they're for Sean Bassick, at least recently. So why would Konami switch to a single layer printing after starting with multi-layer? Uh, no other Yu-Gi-Oh cards are single layer. So that that's a big one too. That's like a, if you don't know the answer to that, that should be that should be highlighted in the article, right? And I don't know if this is the reason why they didn't show scans, if they didn't show uh, anything to do with the actual print itself, if they were just kind of avoiding that because it kind of throws a huge wrench in, in the authentication process. Was it left out on purpose? I don't know. I'd like to think so. You would think if they did all those scans, if they did all that stuff to begin with, and they're really looking to pump and and show that they're the they're the greatest. They're going to show you exactly that the materials are authentic. That you're, they're going to have a comparison. They're going to say why it's single layer. Uh, they're going to have other examples that were single layer. They're going to say who it was, who it came from, how it was, why it was, all of that stuff, as much as they possibly can. And again, this is the, like the, people are skeptical. I don't blame them. Here we have it. And just because you're skeptical does not mean that you hate Rusty. It doesn't mean that you hate any anyone involved. It does not mean that you hate the people that are trying to piece together what, where and how these came to be. That's not that's not the thing. You're allowed to question things. You're allowed to form your own opinion. I know we got uh, David Person's gonna be like, "Holy fuck, Rattle! You hate Rusty so bad. Why you hate him? He he was bulldozing with you, and now you're gonna say his card is not real." Dave in person has this um, condition where he, if people are not doing something for him, they're not appreciating the fact that he has a lot of money and he spent it on Pokemon cards. If they're not believing that the pre-release rash shoe should have been graded, if they're not giving him back pets, he's going to fucking cry about it because he can't be his friend. Unless you're doing something for David person, point to Sean Bassick. <laughs> Even if you're associated with fraud, sports card fraud, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You're doing something for David Person. So you're a dude, you're a good dude. He will S your D all day, every day on video. So no, I don't hate Rusty. I don't hate anyone that's involved with obtaining, grading, whatever. I just think that there's too many holes in this. And we're talking big dollars here. If we're talking six six grand for a raw dog, I think that would have been in Canadian dollars, so even cheaper for you Americans. Let's call it five, five, five k, five k for this bad boy. Graded, authenticated. Some people apparently wrote an article, a half-ass one that we're about to read. And when we're getting into the tens of thousands of dollars here, like you need to do some work here, CGC. Not just from the people that are submitting the card that say like, "Hey, this is probably real." 
Yeah, it needs to be it needs to be flawless. And it needs to state all the flaws if it does have flaws. That's all I'm asking for. Next, the article itself. We have every set has a story. Yu-Gi-Oh by CGC cards. And yes, yeah, so there is probably a reason why no one sent this to me. Um, and why, um, I'm just like, hey, is that article ever coming out? And Rusty's like, yeah, here, they, they put out an article. This is laughable. You know the usual scans and everything else? The usual magnification? We're going to look at the, uh, the rosette pattern and everything else? Mm -mm. We're not doing any of that today. We're just going to, we're just going to, we're going to throw this one out here. Again, everyone was like, just wait for the CGC article. Oh, we waited. CGC Cards recently had the honor of grading several Yu-Gi-Oh! test print cards, each of which were printed early in the TCG's development process. Show us. In 1996, a manga artist named Kazuki Takahashi began publishing a new manga series in Weekly Shonen Jump, a Japanese comic newsletter that featured new and continuing manga strips each month. This new story called Yu-Gi-Oh! introduced a boy named Yugi Moto who, after um, solving an ancient puzzle, awakens the spirit... Okay, we're just we're just describing what Yu-Gi-Oh! is at this point. Is this an article? Originally, the Yu-Gi-Oh! manga was supposed to be continuously feature many of the games that were feral, I, that the Pharaoh had in his arsenal, including card, dice, board, game adaptations. However, when Takahashi introduced a game called Duel Monsters, also known as Magic and Wizards, in the manga, it generated such a strong interest that Takahashi was inspired to change focus. Following the shift in the central plot device, Japanese entertainment company Konami approached Takahashi and Weekly Shonen Jump with the offer to produce a physical trading card game based on Magic and Wizards. Both parties accepted, and development on what would become the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game began in 1997. Very cool. So we got test prints here. Um, surely we got... Surely we... Sure... Where are the scans? Where, where are the, where's the scans? Where's the statements from people that were directly involved? Did they, did they, did they find out any of that stuff? Oh no! Here it is. We're we're gonna talk about the uh, the test prints here again. Very labeled. Very authentic. Even even when there's no grade on there, authentic. The word authentic. CGC Cards recently had the honor of grading four of these early production test prints with each print or originating from different times in the TCG's development. Some examples include this Dark Magician and Blue Eyes White Dragon, both without their respective names printed on the proper text box. This could indicate the, that the cards were meant to test the printing process of the artwork. That's what we get. That's what you waited through this entire video for. That's what we were waiting for the article that everyone was so eager to say, Rattle, you, you should have watched, you should have waited for the article. This could indicate that the cards were meant to test the printing process or the artwork. How the fuck do you label that as authentic? Please, someone please fucking tell me. Where are the scans? Where, where's the employee statements? This could. This could indicate. That's all we get. That's all it is. That's all it takes for CGC to label something as an authentic test print. Fucking insane. Absolutely insane. Are they going to come up with something else? I would love to see the scans. I'd love to see any reasoning behind any of the issues we discussed today. Any of the issues that uh, were discussed in that previous video. No, I, I'm sorry. I don't hate Rusty. I don't hate the people that got these authenticated. Um, but I do see it as sort of a... It's an article. It's an attention. It's a media grab. Um, and can potentially burn a lot of people if they end up buying these. Not only the people that bought the graded copies, even if CGC decides that they're going to refund those people, but anyone that goes out and spends $5,000, $6,000 on this stuff because they think that it's real because... CGC is putting in a case and saying it's real. It's dangerous. It is. It's. It's not. It's not the. It's not the lamination zard where you just you know hopefully pay one person back for their uh, the grading fees and the little bit that they spent on on eBay thinking that it was an error. Like this is this is big bucks if this person pumps out a bunch of this stuff. It's sketchy. 
and the, the it's it's lazy, sketchy, and I don't it doesn't it doesn't surprise me in this day and age of CGC.